Hi everyone, this is Laura, and this is going to be a Textily Floss Tube Extra video where I'm going to show you how I fully finish my ornament piece that I had showed you in Floss Tube number 11. So that's going to give you a little more detail on this pattern design and the inspiration behind that piece. So check out that video if you're interested. But I have my piece stitched and I'm ready to fully finish it, so I thought I would just document what I'm doing and show you the piece fully finished. So. Let's just go briefly over the supplies I'm going to be using and I'm going to be giving you a few different options that you can do maybe with whatever you have on hand or whatever you're more comfortable with because finishing should be easy and fun and not stressful so I want you to feel like you can do this. And this is a piece from Michaels and this is my painted piece so if you see it in your store it's going to be unfinished. And if you're watching this at a later date, this was a new Christmas item for 2023. So I'm not sure if it'll, how long it will be available, but you could always find something I'm sure similar to this. But you would need your design, your stitch piece to be approximately four and a half to five inches to be able to really fit well inside of this. So I'm gonna show you the back sticker so you can screenshot it if you want to see the barcode or numbers on the back so that you can maybe find it in your store. I'm also going to link it below because you can order it online. It is originally $7.99, but you can usually always find it on sale or use a coupon. So, for my piece, I it finishes approximately at four and three quarters, and I will link this pattern below so that you can uh, get the download if you would like it. My stitch piece is going to fit on a four and three quarters inch circle, and I include these circle cutout templates in the pattern. So that's going to go on here. And then I have a larger piece, five and three fourths inch, that I'm going to put my backing fabric on. And this is from the Joyful Gatherings by Primitive Gatherings collection, Christmas collection for this year. So that is going to be this piece. And then my stitch piece is going to fit inside of that. And then I'm going to do some pom-pom trim in between those layers. And I'm not sure yet what color I want to go with, but I have Brick House and Sequoia, and they're both by Lady Dot Creates uh, pom pom trim. So I'll have to see when I get there what I want to go with. So, as I said, the templates are included in your printout, but if for some reason you changed your count of the fabric, then you would need to come up with different size circles. So, this should be stitched on 32 count or 16 count Ada to be able to fit well on this circle. If you go up to 14 or 28 count, you may not have enough room to add a backing fabric. You would need to just put your stitch piece directly on the ornament. And of course, you could always do the method where you do a magnet and a washer. That way your piece could be removable. But for me, I'm going to just stick it straight on here because I don't plan on changing this piece out. So a few other supplies that you're going to need is some glue. And I'm going to be using Aileen's Tacky Glue today as well as Aileen's Fabric Fusion. And this does come in a large bottle as well, but I purposely buy the pins because I like the tip applicator for applying my pom-pom trim. So that's what this is going to be used for. And my hot glue gun ready to go. And I'm also going to be using some batting. And if you have any scraps left over from a project, that would work well. This is just some I happen to have from Fat Quarter Shop that are pre-cut. They're eight by eight, and it's the 80-20 blend. And as far as your piece, you're going to want to have it painted and dried and ready to go. I ended up using two colors of Americana paint. I started with one coat of primary red, and it was a little bit bright for what I wanted, so I added a little bit of burnt umber to the next two coats. So this is three coats of the red and burnt umber mixed together. And then for the top, I wanted gold. So I found this Deco Color Premium Pin at Michael's. And it's got a chisel tip marker, so it's very easy to apply. And it kind of gives a gold leaf effect. And I'm not sure if it's gonna really pick up well with the camera and the lighting, but I love how it turned out. So this is my finished piece and it's ready to go. And the other things that you will need and this is where it becomes kind of optional based on what you would prefer using. You could just use mat board. So this is just an eight by 10 piece of mat board that I, I buy like a 10 pack from Amazon. If you do this method, you're gonna have to use the tacky glue or if you kinda wanna make your own version of a sticky board, 
you could do the glue dots from Fat Quarter Shop. So I have the two sizes here. They're acid-free, double-sided. So you could do that if it's a little less messy than the glue. But if you want to just go straight to the sticky boards, you can do that. So this is the 8x10 sticky board. And just to show you, with this size, you can, it is a very tight fit, but it, you can fit both of your templates on this piece. So I, if you're gonna use an eight by 10 piece like this, I would definitely trace it out first just to make sure they, you, you put them where they fit, they both fit on there and then cut. But if you want a little more room to play with, you could go up to the 11 by 14 size of sticky board to be able to have enough room. So you don't need both, you either just need this, the sticky board or a mat board, but either will work. You're going to trace your larger size, the five and three quarter inch circle, onto your sticky board or mat board, whatever you're using. In this case, I'm going to be using the sticky board. So I trace it and I'm going to cut this out. I like to start by using the cutter, box cutter. And it, for me, it doesn't go all the way through, but it's a good way to get it started. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle file it down with an emery board if you don't like the rough edges. So I went all the way around with my box cutter, be very careful, and now I'm going to take some old scissors that I don't care about them getting sticky, and then I'm going to cut the rest of this out. And it just makes it a little bit easier for me to cut it instead of just cutting it straight with the scissors. So I'm going to take my four and three quarter inch circle and do the same thing and cut that out. To even up the edges of your uh, sticky board or mat board a little bit, just take a emery board and sand the edges a little bit just to smooth them out. So you're gonna turn your backing fabric to the wrong side facing up. So the right side is down, the wrong side is up. And then if you're using the sticky board, your flat side that has no sticky is gonna go down on top of the wrong side of the fabric. If you're using the mat board, this is the time where you would need to use your glue, your Aileen's Tacky, or the, the glue dots and make your own sticky board. And so put dots all around the edges. So for me though, I'm just gonna peel off the back of this and stick this, put this down. But before I do that, I need to cut out my circle about roughly an inch around this circle. So if you have trouble, you can just take a ruler and mark and it doesn't matter what you use to mark because you're going to be cutting this off and you wouldn't even see it anyway. So this is just to help give you a guide. So approximately one inch extra. And once you've drawn some lines, you can kind of connect them if that helps you. But you could probably just use your scissors as the guide at this point. So now we're going to cut this out. Okay, we have our circle cut out, and once again, the right side is facing down. Non-sticky side is going down on top of the wrong side of the fabric. Tear off your sticky board paper, or the adhesive to your glue dots, if that's what you're using. So the sticky side is going to stay up, and we're just going to start at the top, pull it tight, and at the bottom, pull it tight. And it is forgiving, like it's not so sticky, it's going to, like you can't pull your fabric up if you mess up. And then we're going to go right, and then we're gonna go left. Now, now we're gonna work in these corners. So, you want all your pleating to go towards the back. It doesn't matter how messy the back looks. So you just want it as smooth on the front as you can get it. So just start on one edge and pull tight and try to get that, make those pleats and get that fabric as smooth as you can on the front. You can check it as you go or you can just get it all done and then do it so you can see how nice and smooth that is. And we can even adjust these areas that we did first if we find that we need to, but I'm just pulling tight on that fabric. That's why I like to leave an inch so this was an area that I had already stuck down and I think I'm going to pull that up a little bit so I can get a little more tension there. Keep working around. 
And once we get it all done, we'll just check it and then we can adjust small areas after that. Okay. So, check the front, make sure you're happy with it. See if there's any if there's any areas that you see a pleat on the front or that are not smooth, you can always just go to the back and lift that up and redo it. But mine turned out pretty good. So, once you check all the sides, you can kind of go over it with your finger, stick down those edges some more and just make it as smooth as you can get it and this is our biggest circle that's going to go here, but don't stick it down yet because that is sticky on the back. So we're gonna wait until we get our other piece finished. So this is ready to go, so set this aside. So now we have our smaller circle, the four and three quarter inch. This is what our stitch piece is gonna go on. So we have our cutout, and once again, make it as smooth as you can with your emery board. We have our stitch piece here, and we're gonna be cutting it out with the smaller template. So I'm just going to turn my stitching so that the back is facing forward and I'm going to do the same thing where I just mark out about an inch around this so I know where to cut. Okay, I've got my piece marked out and I'm just going to cut around and cut this piece out. And you're also going to cut a piece of your batting out, but you don't need the extra inch around this piece. It needs to be exactly four and three quarters. So cut out a piece of batting and if you like yours extra thick, you can do two pieces of batting, but I'm just doing one for mine. I'm going to be using some of the glue dots to just make it simple to stick my batting down, but you could definitely use the Aileen's glue if you don't have this. Basically what I want to do is stick my batting to the non-sticky side of the map, the sticky board, because I want to keep this side for my other side, for my stitch piece. So I am just going to grab a couple of these and stick them. If you did the aliens, you probably need to wait a few minutes to let this dry, your batting dry to the um, board. So we've got our board ready and we're just going to stick our batting right on top of there. And stick it down really well. So now we need to uh, line up our stitch piece on this piece here. I've made this to where your design pretty much goes all the way to the very top of this circle so that there is not a lot of fabric around the edges. So go ahead and line up where, how, make sure it's equal on all the edges. Now at this point, if you're more comfortable, you can do lacing. So if you're going to do the lacing, you could actually have used the sticky side to stick your batting and lace it. But I'm choosing to do it the way that I did this piece because I find that it makes a very nice flat edge and I want my layers to be as flat as possible together. But if you add the lacing, sometimes that can add a little bit of thickness and for this piece, I just didn't want that added bulk, so that's why I'm doing it this way, but you could do the traditional lacing for this piece. So once I get my pattern lined up how I want it, and just take a little bit of time making sure everything looks good. So just carefully flip it over, peel off the sticky back. We're going to do the same thing, and we're just going to lightly tack the four corners and then just check to see if we like our placement. So you don't need to stick it down all the way, just do a light stick and then check it. We'll check it to make sure everything still look good and I'm just gonna finish up. So far we have our backing piece covered in fabric and just be careful if it's sticky on the back if you're trying this out you don't want to push it all the way down. And then we have our ornament piece that we're going to stick on the top so it's going to be layered like this. And then at this point I'm going to decide what color trim that I want to go in between these layers. I think I'm going to go with the red since there's less 
red stitching in the piece so it kind of brings out more of that red and since most of the design is in green so I think I'm going to go with the brick house trim around the edge so I'm going to do um, where you snip the threads of the lady dot and when you snip these it pulls apart so if you haven't ever used this before you just snip that and you're trying to separate this banding from your trim so go ahead and do that for the length that you need around your piece okay so I have my pom-pom trim separated now and it's approximately 18 inches long to be able to go around the whole ornament so I'm going to set this aside for now and we're going to put these two pieces together so for this step I'm going to use the tacky glue you could also use the hot glue gun for this if you wanted to but since we're it's gonna be fabric on fabric I just decided to use the aliens so when you put your glue this is the back of your stitch piece you just want to go around this fabric here and don't get too close to the edge here because it will uh, come out the side when you push down to put pressure on it and there's no need to go inside the sticky as well just go right here along the edge Okay, so we have a good coating of glue, and you're going to decide which way you want your point. So I'm going to choose the way I like it. Try to center up your design, and before you completely stick it, if you want to take a ruler and just check to see if it's the same on all four sides. And mine is so once you're happy with it just press down if you're using the hot glue you can probably just hold this for a, a minute or so and it should be okay but since I'm using the Aileen's and I want to make sure it's stuck on there take these long clips and place them all around larger size wonder clips so I'm just going to do this so that I don't have to hold it but like I said you could just do a book or you just basically want some pressure on this while that Aileen's is setting your pom-pom trim you're gonna want to make a clean edge so you're usually probably gonna have a messy looking end so just snip off that so that you're left with a clean edge on your pom-pom trim. I think this would also look good with rickrack sticking out um, or you don't even have to do anything it's just a, a little extra touch. So I'm gonna heat up my glue gun. For this piece before you get your glue just see how you're gonna want to position it. So for me I want this straight at the top and these going to the side and just kind of get familiar with how you want it positioned it's a, it's a larger circle so it's kind of easy to see you um, I want it almost touching this and then there's just a little gap here at the bottom so my glue gun is ready and I'm going to do the same thing with this I'm going to just go right around here with the hot glue and try to work quickly our last step is going to be applying the pom-pom trim with the fabric fusion. I'm going to start at the bottom and I've got a clean edge and it does kind of have a side that should face forward because if you can see with it facing the right way it lays nice facing out but if there's a kind of a flat side that doesn't lay as nicely as the right side up. So just be aware of that. Just take your time going around to make sure you find the right side. So like I said, I'm going to start right at the bottom and just put a little bit of the glue and I like to just do a little bit at a time. So I'm going to stick it and just hold that tip for just a second before I keep going. Okay. 
This glue does dry clear, but I still try to be as neat as I can with it. Okay, when you get to the bottom, you're just going to butt them up as close as you can together. And I like to wait and let this glue dry. And then once it's dried a little bit, I'll snip this off. And you should be able to just get them basically to connect. And sometimes you need another little dot of glue to, um, to make that stick. Here is our finished piece. And I'm very happy with how it came out. And it wouldn't hurt to put a heavy book on this just to let all that glue dry for a couple of hours. But other than that, we are done. So I hope you found this video helpful. It was my first tutorial, so I'm sure there are some improvements that could be made, but I just wanted to show you how I finished this piece. And as I mentioned, I will link where you can find the pattern below. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next floss tube.